All right, today, calculating delta H enthalpy change if you're given the equilibrium constants, KEQ, at two different temperatures. I've given you the data here, one KEQ at 2000 Kelvin, another KEQ at 3000 Kelvin. The KEQs and the temperatures in the delta H are related via this equation related to the Van't Hoff equation. You'll note that this is a ratio K2 over K1, and this is a difference between reciprocals. That's one over T2 and one over T1. Your teacher may have these numbers flipped if the negative is gone, or may have the order of these flipped if the negative is gone. If your teacher's equation looks different from this, it's probably just because they've rearranged it. So, let's begin. If we want to solve for delta H, we just need to plug in these numbers and then isolate it. So let's do that. Let's take the natural logarithm, I call it the ln of k2. I'm gonna make this data set two, and I'm gonna make this data set one. So k2 is 8.614. K1 is 0 0.782. I am solving for delta H, so I can't put a number there. And R is always going to be 8.314, that's in joules per mole Kelvin. All right. Now, this is one big bracket, one over temperature number two, which is 3000 Kelvin, and one over temperature one, which is 2000 Kelvin. I am going to do that first on my calculator. All right. Now, I don't know if you can see what's going on with this calculator exactly, but. 1 over 3,000 minus 1 over 2,000. I am able to type all of that in all at once. There we go. That gives me negative 1.6667 times 10 to the negative 4. I still have my negative delta H, and I still have 8.314. Now I've included units here, so I guess I should include units here. These are Kelvin to the negative one. That Kelvin to the negative one is gonna cancel with this Kelvin to the negative one in the denominator, and that's going to leave my delta H with units of joules per mole. Let's do the natural logarithm stuff on the other side. 8.614 divided by 0.782 is 11.02. Yeah, and then I can take the natural logarithm, the ln of that number, ln. That gives me 2.399, 2.399. I'm gonna carry one more decimal place because I like that. I like not rounding significant figures until the very end. Okay, so how to isolate for delta H? Well, I'm gonna move the negative over to make it negative two. 0.3993. I have to undo division by 8.314, so I multiply by 8.314, and I have to undo multiplication by this number, so I will divide by that number, 1.6667 times 10 to the negative 4. Note that we lost the unit off of this. It is currently unitless, only because I canceled it now. This is unitless because whatever units K comes with, which we usually assume is nothing, cancel out when you do the ratio anyways. The only thing that's left over is joules per mole on top, so my answer is going to be in joules per mole. Here's that number again. I'm going to take the negative of that number, it's negative 2.3993, times 8.314, divided by negative 1.6666667, times 10 to the negative four, and the answer I end up with is 119686, 119686. That's a positive number. And again, we've agreed that the units are gonna be joules per mole. That is the same as positive 119 point approximately seven kilojoules per mole, which should sound to you like a you know, reasonable delta H for an endothermic reaction. All right, it's that quick actually. As long as you know the math and you can isolate for the variable delta H, this formula will carry you through everything you need to do. 
under five minutes. Well, not anymore. Best of luck.